Are you ready to change now? And a very warm welcome to all of you watching us from wherever you are around the globe. We are coming to you live from the Eiffel Tower here in Paris. You're watching us on Arena, the main channel on this second edition of the Global Sports Week, the global rendezvous for the world of sports, business and society. I hope you're fine and safe wherever you are around the world in these difficult times. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself for those of you that don't know me. My name is Louise Eklund and I'm going to be your guide and your host over the next couple of days. So we're here to reflect on sports positive impact in a purpose driven world in which Gen Z is playing an essential role. Reinvention in action is the theme of the 2021 Global Sports Week that will connect international sports and Olympic international capitals from here in Paris, where we stand, to Beijing, Tokyo, Dakar, Milan and of course Los Angeles. Let's take a look at the program for the next two days. It's dense, it's rich. We have so much amazing content for you. We're going to start tomorrow with uh, Beijing in the morning, and then we'll be moving on to our second shift, which is the lifestyle shift. We'll be, of course, talking about health, which is an essential subject, of course, at the moment, and central to everything that is happening around us. Then we'll go live to Milan. We'll be back in Paris to talk about equality, very important subject at the moment, and then live to Los Angeles. On the second day, we'll be heading to Tokyo, We'll be back in Paris to talk about power, climate. We'll be heading to Dakar, back to Paris to talk about data. And of course, then we'll be moving on to the closing ceremony. You're going to be meeting with a whole host of incredible speakers over the next three days. And just like uh, last year, we'll be wel welcoming our young sports makers. They've been selected specifically uh, to accompany us during the Global Sports Week based on their vision of the future and uh, of sports, of course, and they will be playing a very active role in all of our different debates. We'll be talking more about the format, of course, and the objectives of this edition as we move forward and officially kick off with this second edition. So without further ado, I'd like to invite the chairman and co-founder of the Global Sports Week, Lucien Boyer, to come and join me. Hello, Lucien. I'm really thrilled to have you Hello, here on Louise. set with us. And now we're going to welcome the French Minister of Sports, Roxana Marassignanou. Hello, uh, Roxana. Lovely to see you as well, Madame la Ministre. Great to have you both with us on the set. Uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, have a little chat to Lucien. Since last year, Global Sports Week, um, so many things have, of course, happened. Uh, it's been a very complicated uh, year in our societies, um, in the world of sport as well, of course, and beyond. Um, what are the key challenges that the sports industry has had to face in 2020, first of all? Well, it's true to say that the world of sports has certainly been one of the most affected by COVID with very little or no practice, no training during lockdown periods. Of course. And of course, um, many professional uh, competitions being held uh, behind closed doors and uh, the uh, major events have been postponed this year. So a very tough period for the whole ecosystem from the simplest grassroots associations to the most powerful league. Have, everyone has been hurt by this and with some social and economic consequences. But in the same time, it's true to say that sport has never been perceived as so much essential in people's life, in our society, mm -hmm. and also as a factor for better health. So I think that despite all the headwinds, there is a lot of hope that has been identified this year. Great. Thanks, Lucien. Madame la Ministre, uh, we can't ignore the headlines, obviously. This has been a, an absolutely unprecedented year. Um, 
the world of sports has obviously been largely uh, affected by everything that's going on. How are you holding up uh, after all this upheaval? It was a, a really strange period where in which we had to work together. Mm. And I'm very happy that our president, Emmanuel Macron, takes this subject very seriously and um, choose to support um, all our stakeholders, um, as well as Grassport, who has suffered a lot, not being able to, uh, uh, to propose what they are used to, to do um, in a normal period, sports and also social events. Um, and also, um, we will propose a solidarity fund of 100 million euros yes. in order to help people to go back in these associations, in this club from the grassroots sports. Also, the, um, the professional sport has been uh, a lot affected, mm -hmm. so the state has uh, came uh, in help um, mm -hmm. and in support to all these structures with uh, 300 million euros helping all the professional clubs. And um, the other sector that has been a lot affected too is the commercial one with uh, the sport uh, um, fitness clubs. Uh, which are right now um, not doing nothing. Sure. So it's very hard uh, in a financial way, but also in a moral way for people who are used to bring uh, uh, happiness and uh, link between people. Of course, yes, it is morally very difficult, but there is a lot of help from the uh, French government, of course. Uh, Lucien, let's talk about this year's edition. Reinvention in action is a very powerful statement. It's a strong uh, declaration there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the objectives of this Global Sports Week? Well, first of all, the Global Sports Week itself is reinventing, facing the same situation as everyone. Yeah. So <laughs> bringing together uh, six hub events in uh, future Olympic cities of uh, Tokyo, uh, Beijing, Milan, Dakar, and Los Angeles, connected into this amazing uh, Eiffel Tower central studio, mm. and with 100% uh, online access to all our delegates across the world, is a way for us to deliver an event while uh, putting safety and health as the highest priority for all our participants. But uh, with the uh, fantastic uh, lineup of top-notch speakers that are going to come and tackle all those important issues that sport is facing, and they will be uh, challenged by the young sports makers who are the voice of the new generation, mm -hmm. they will also be supported by an amazing content that has been uh, assembled with the help of our fantastic coalition of uh, sponsors and partners. I think that we are able now to channel the uh, creativity and freshness of our inaugural edition last year, uh, opened by yourself, Madame la Ministre, in the Louvre, mm. and to, ch to channel this uh, creativity into this new uh, hybrid format, which might be a little bit the direction of travel for the world of sports in its whole. Hybridization is certainly a world we are going to hear yeah, a lot <laughs> during this uh, moment. Okay, so looking forward to the future now a little bit, uh, Lucien, what can we hope and wish for in uh, 2021 and how can the Global Sports Week help to push things in the right direction? Well, this is a rare opportunity to reset the ecosystem, yeah. to really change the model. Actually, crisis has hit a lot of the traditional models and a lot of changes have been accelerated by the crisis acceleration of the uh, digitalization of uh, a media platform, but also accelerate, acceleration of the connected sports, the uh, physical, digital uh, connections, and the way people are now attacking technology to help uh, coping with the problems. Mm -hmm. And I think that having uh, today uh, Global Sports Week in the very early days of 2021, um, offers us the possibility to have uh, responsible leaders who are going to come and talk and change makers to come together and start uh, sharing some new ideas, uh, shaking the lines mm -hmm. and shaping a future of sports with a more positive impact on society. Mm -hmm. Madame la Ministre, France and Paris are hosting for the second year running the Global Sports Week event at the intersection sorry, of business and society, focusing on integration. What does that actually mean to you? 
I'm very proud that uh, this um, edition takes place again in France and in the Eiffel Tower because, of <laughs> course, it's a, a magnificent way to promote France and uh, his uh, beauty and also to make uh, people uh, travel a little bit in yeah. uh, our country. <laughs> So thank you to Lucien uh, to have uh, battled um, in order that uh, this edition can take place in this new format that is innovative and um, it shows the way in which uh, sport can enter right now, be more creative, innovative things, to think at new uh, competition format also. And um, um, I'm very happy because uh, exchanging point of views in that period is crucial and it's the aim and the objective of um, Global Sports Week to uh, speak about uh, the um, situation of each country and the expectations and the hopes that uh, this period can, can also bring in our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life. Well, we have an absolute amazing lineup over the next couple of days. There is so much amazing content, and I'm sure that all of you watching will um, take away some amazing uh, ideas as well. Lucien, I think it's time. Yes, but first of all, I want to thank the Minister <laughs> uh, of Sports and the Ministry because that's a very strong support we have and your face in the project has been one of the uh, key factors for us to be here today. So thank you very much, Roxana. Um, yes, it's time for you to open officially this second edition. So I declare the Global Sports Week officially opened. Great, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you Lucien, thank you, Roxana, for opening. And we'll have time to discuss in more detail all the subjects that we've just discovered now. This is Global Sports Week 2021. What an inspirational 2021 edition of Global Sports Week to come. Before getting started, we would obviously like to thank all our partners without whom this edition would not at all be possible. Um, I'd like to thank, first of all, the founding partners, the Ministry of Sports, Adidas, Group of BPCE and Eggsports, uh, the associate partners, of course, as well, EDF and Vivendi, and all the other partners and proud supporters of the Global Sports Week. Sincerely, we'd like to thank you uh, very, very much. Now it's time for some practical information for this year's digital edition. We want this event to be as interactive as possible. What that means is that you need to get onto the chat, which is on the right-hand side of the screen, get sending your comments through, your messages, ask your questions, and we will be as active as possible and interact with you guys as well. Uh, you can use the hashtag uh, Global Sports Week Paris G. SW Paris, of course. Feel free to also visit the other Global Sports Week spaces. We have the Marketplace, where you can find 59 exhibitors and discover some very innovative companies and organizations from the sports industry, of course. There is also our village, the central space of the Global Sports Week, where you'll find a large content library and a live stream channel where our partners will be discussing key topics from the sports industry and the intersection of business and sports, of course. For those of you that have uh, what is called a pro pass, uh, you can go to the Pro Zone, a space dedicated to, uh, for professional content where you can attend different uh, masterclasses and workshops. And last but not least, at the arena, we have all this amazing content for you, and of course, uh, it will be available on demand and online uh, just after the event. If you haven't already done so, uh, please complete your Global Sports Week digital profile on the platform because it's a great way to uh, get some personalized uh, content and, su and suggestions. We would like to now thank all of you, all of you that are watching us for your participation as well. Um, and we'd like to thank those that are hosting us, of course, starting from the city of Paris. And for this, I would like to invite uh, Monsieur Le, the Deputy Mayor of Paris, Pierre Rabadan, to come and join me. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you so much uh, for uh, joining us today. Of course, uh, this is the second year that the City of Paris is partnering up for this uh, great event. First of all, what does it represent for you and for the city to have a Global Sports Week here? Uh, it was an uh, essential thing. Firstly, we are really happy to have a, an event in this period 
uh, specifically really difficult for even in general and sports in particular. We, we are really happy to welcome this massive event for sports, uh, second time in Paris, uh, with adaptation actually, as you see. Uh, yeah. We are here in the Eiffel Tower, it's a massive place for Paris, but uh, we're, we're, I, I'm just happy to be there and <laughs> to participate to an event. Yeah, actually, it's <laughs> just really the first point yeah. already. <laughs> and uh, really, uh, uh, another important point in to, to be able to, to have another city around the world and uh, uh, give him to Paris his main uh, um, role of uh, a world city. Yes. So here we, we are again. Yeah, of course. So um, Paris is, is definitely one of the uh, world capitals of sports at the moment. Uh, you're going to be hosting some major events over the next uh, few years. I'm thinking, of course, about the Rugby World Cup sure. uh, that is coming very soon and uh, the 2024 uh, Olympic uh, yeah. Games. This is going to be a great journey to come. Yeah, uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, works for me and uh, in general for the city towards these two massive events. Uh, for me, rugby is a, a, sp a special sport because I, as you know, maybe I did it before. I was a professional rugby player, so, uh, but it's uh, really important for the, the uh, French, fr mm -hmm. uh, for the country in general, and especially uh, for in, in Paris and in the Stade de France, we'll have a lot of ga uh, games here to welcome, so, uh, and just a few months after, we'll uh, uh, be able to welcome, finally, uh, the Olympic and Paralympic Games. And uh, it's uh, a massive importance uh, for uh, people living here, firstly, for, all, uh, for sports all, uh, all around the world, sorry. And uh, uh, we have a lot of ambitions around the Olympics and Paralympic Games to change a lot of things, uh, making sports in the city firstly, but uh, we, we have a, a lot of more uh, other impact we would like to improve in the city. Uh, for, for example, swimming in the scene uh, is one of the massive objectives. We have a lot of uh, impact uh, and uh, legacy we would like to give to our uh, population. So it's uh, really ambitious. We want to create with uh, Paris 2024 and uh, and uh, all the partners, a new kind of Olympics, and uh, it will be starting here in Paris in 2024. Well, it's definitely extremely exciting, especially yeah. when I, I feel a bit Parisian, so I, I think yeah. it's uh, you know, very, very uh, exciting for all of us uh, watching, of course. Um, sport is such a great catalyst to tackle some of our current major challenges. Um, I'm thinking about, obviously, our shifts that we have here at the Global Sports Week, health, climate, equality, inclusion through uh, sports. Um, what is the city's strategy in this respect? Uh, as, as you said, there is a lot of things to do with sports. Uh, I think firstly we have to invest more. Uh, the practice of sport, but uh, in the same time, education, health, and all the consequences we have mm -hmm. making sports and all around the sports. So uh, we have this ambition in the city of Paris. Uh, around the massive event we spoke about, we would like to invest uh, in the city to be able to be a city where it's more easier to practice and to attract people who, are, who actually are far away from a, an everyday practicing yeah. uh, to be able to catch them. So it's a massive challenge too. We have to recreate some specific area uh, for sports with associations, clubs, and all the federal sports. But uh, um, in another way, we would like to do that, uh, like a free sports all around in, in the city. So making here around the scene, uh, we, can, we would like to adapt the, the kids scene mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of ma massive points, different points all around Paris, in the parks, for example. So we have a lot of ambition in legacy, as I said. And uh, firstly, is to adapt our city to be able to create the passion and uh, the feeling to to making sports simply. Fantastic. I know uh, Anne Hidalgo, uh, Madame la Maire, yeah. can't be with us today, but she left yeah. us a message. Is that correct? Exactly, exactly. Uh, okay. Uh, she told me uh, to welcome uh, everyone who is watching us here, and you, Louise, especially, <laughs> and uh, she had a message for you. Okay, so let's take a look. Here we go.
Bonjour à toutes et à tous. C'est une joie d'accueillir à Paris pour la deuxième année consécutive, le Global Sport Week. Dans la période très difficile que nous traversons, nous avons plus que jamais besoin du sport pour nous retrouver. Même à distance, je suis très fière que Paris puisse rester connecté au reste du monde, notamment avec Pékin, Milan, Los Angeles, Tokyo et Dakar. Je salue d'ailleurs cette initiative qui permet de nouer un lien fort entre les différents territoires olympiques, les villes olympiques, et de faire naître de belles solidarités entre nous. Ensemble, nous partageons la conviction que le sport doit être au cœur de nos vies et de nos villes. Ensemble, nous allons pouvoir échanger sur nos bonnes pratiques, penser le sport de demain pour l'adapter aux différentes évolutions de nos sociétés. En accueillant cet événement, Paris montre sa volonté de devenir la capitale internationale du sport pour les années à venir, avec la Coupe du monde de rugby en 2023 et bien sûr, bien sûr, les Jeux olympiques et paralympiques en 2024, nous serons sous les projecteurs. Cette mise en lumière nous oblige, et face au plus grand défi de l'humanité, le dérèglement climatique, le plus grand événement du monde prend ses responsabilités. En organisant des Jeux qui sont neutres en carbone, Paris 2024 veut montrer l'exemple en s'alignant sur les objectifs de l'accord de Paris. Ces Jeux seront également une occasion unique d'accélérer la mise en place de nos politiques publiques au service de la population, que ce soit en matière de transport, de logement, d'équipement sportif, d'éducation, de sport adapté, de handisport et d'égalité aussi entre les femmes et les hommes. Ces défis passionnants sont devant nous et Paris prendra toute sa part pour mettre le sport au service d'une société plus respectueuse de l'individu et de la planète. J'aimerais terminer en ayant une pensée particulière pour les Young Sport Makers qui sont là pour interroger, stimuler les intervenantes et les intervenants. Plus globalement, je veux m'adresser aux jeunes à Paris et ailleurs. Je sais à quel point la situation est difficile, surtout pour elles et pour eux, et c'est pourquoi je me réjouis que ce type d'événement existe pour penser ensemble le sport et le monde de demain. Uh, Pierre Rabadon, uh, I'd like to thank you for being with us today. Thank you so thank much, you and much. thank you to Madame la Maire for her message. Enjoy Global Sports Week. In thank Paris. you. Enjoy. Thank you. Here we go. So if you cast your memories back to last year, you'll remember that we were at the Louvre and this year we have invested the Eiffel Tower, one of the most prestigious monuments, a real jewel, of course, of modern architecture. It's an honor and a privilege for all of us to be here. And the man that is welcoming us is the president of La Société d'Exploitation de la Tour Eiffel, Monsieur Jean-François Martin. Monsieur Martin, thank you so much uh, for being with us today and thank you for welcoming us here in the Eiffel Tower. It's so amazing to be here. The view is absolutely incredible and the images that you guys are going to be seeing over the next few days are just phenomenal, um, of course. So, first of all, tell us a bit more about this unique jewel of Paris and the most photographed monument in the world, of course, and what it means to you to welcome the Global Sports Week. Well, welcome, welcome all of you uh, from Paris and from all around the world to the Eiffel Tower. It's, of course, the beating heart of Paris. Uh, maybe being a little bit slower than usually yeah. right now. We are um, normally uh, welcoming six million people and above every year. Right now we are, like all of us, uh, stunned by the, the COVID crisis. But this is a one, uh, 132 years old old lady where yeah. we are standing right now that we are carrying every day to be sure it stands the most beautiful uh, monument of Paris, one of the most iconic places in the world. And that's why uh, we wanted to welcome you, the Global Sports Week here uh, at the first floor of the Eiffel Tower, maybe to create the first uh, global sports meeting at 57 meters <laughs> high, maybe it's the first in the world, yes. I guess. And secondly, because when you look at the history of the, of the tower, uh, at the beginning it's a, it's a challenge 
uh, relieved by uh, engineers, architects that uh, 130 years ago created a three, 324 meters iron towers that was never made before. Mm -hmm. And so it was a, an issue of innovation, of creating, of cutting the edge and going above and above. And it is what I guess Global Sports Week want to do in sport business. And so we, we consider that hosting an innovation meeting right here was a good place. So a lot of us know the Eiffel Tower or maybe visited the Eiffel Tower coming to Paris as a, as a tourist attraction. Uh, but it's also uh, a unique opportunity to, f to, to do different events here. I mean, it's a real events place as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, it is. The, the Eiffel Tower has all along this history being a place for showcasing great events from uh, the Tour de France to the Marathon de Paris mm -hmm. and obviously the major sports even like the Euro 2016. There was a fan zone here with uh, more than uh, 200,000 people right here on the Champ de Mars looking at the Eiffel Tower that lights up every night on the color of the flag of the country that uh, won the game. Uh, we welcome here uh, the Ryder Cup four years ago. Yeah. Uh, we welcome here every year and I maybe a challenge for all your uh, attendance today, the vertical race, which is a race in the staircase of the Eiffel Tower. And so every year you can run on the, scare, on the stair and, and beat this challenge. So that's why it's, of course, a, a place for innovation. And so you are good to be here, but it's a place of sports. And it will be, in 2024, one of the beating hearts of the Olympic and Paralympic Games. And so we are stand with the Global Sport Week to prepare this major event. I must say, uh, once again, thanks so much uh, for having us, uh, Jean-François Martin. Enjoy, and Thank maybe you. see you next year physically. Uh, I okay, I hope you. so, I hope so. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, bye-bye. So Paris is welcoming the Global Sports Week, of course, and welcoming you that are watching us and connected across the world. But Paris will also soon to be welcoming one of the most important sporting events uh, in the years to come. I'm talking about the Summer Olympic and Paralympic Games of Paris 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of the Paris 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Games Organizing Committee and three times Olympic champion, Tony Estonguet. Really great to have you with us. And I'm going to straight away ask Lucien Boyer to come and join us. Lucien. Fantastic. Thank you very much for being with us, Tony. I know you've got a lot of things uh, to announce to us today. Uh, Lucien, it's over to you. Thank you, Tony. I'm so glad that you're here again, one year later. And this is very symbolic because I remember that during the bid, uh, uh, campaign, the, the Eiffel Tower was a very important part of your campaign, so here mm. we are at the heart of it. Um, you know that the theme uh, of this week is reinvention in action, and it was important for us to start with someone who leads a sporting organization that has no other choice than take the change. So how did you do that? Yeah, thank you very much. I think it's also very interesting when you are at this kind of organization to uh, try to reinvent yourself. It's part of the DNA of sport. Uh, all sports organizations are different, all sport events are different, and we, we like it to reinvent all the time. It's what the athletes do all the time, and it's how they, they win also to make the difference by uh, finding something new, something different. So, of course, since the beginning of the crisis, Paris 2024 had to adapt to a new concept, a new context, and uh, we have this uh, chance to be in Paris and, and to capitalize also on, on uh, iconic venues, uh, just fantastic. But for us, we try today to reinvent the part of the games by opening the doors. That's really important for us to open the doors of the games to make sure that people will, will have a better access. And uh, it started here by having uh, iconic venues and not having sports within the stadiums, but within the city. In, in such iconic places, but it's also opening sports to women, and it will be the first time that uh, the games will be 50% of participation. It's opening the doors to uh, local territories, and we have today 1,300 cities who will be part of the dynamic of Paris 2024. We open the doors to the competition, and for the first time in Paris, we will have the marathon open to the participation of everyone, and that's mm -hmm. something new. So this is always how we can 
find opportunities to open the doors of the games. Today, it's a little bit strange to speak about this because we are a little bit in a lockdown situation. But we, we, we wanted to, to go on the other side and, and, and leave the message that those games will be open. And why is it so important for you to open those doors? Maybe what, what I suggest is uh, before uh, speaking about it, I, I, I propose that we can watch a, 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 short, a short video. Okay. Okay, let's take a look. Here we go. share uh, their passion with the fans and uh, for Paris 2024 we wanted also to do a little bit like the athletes do they don't just compete in a competition for the games it not just last one day or two weeks of competition it's a four years time of preparation and for the fans who are passionate by the games we wanted also to offer the opportunity to share the journey with us till the games and it's already started. So that's why we launched the club, Paris 2024. It's an open space where any, anyone can join. It's, you, you go on the, the website of Paris 2024. It's for free, you can join. And you will have opportunities to meet athletes, to, to get all the information, to become volunteers for the ticketing, for everything about the flame, and all the programs we will launch in schools and, and, and so on. There is all information in, in this club Paris 2024. So if you are interested in Paris 2024, you can join this, uh, this space. And this can be joined from all over the world? From all over the world. It's, it's a real universal place. And uh, we, we can receive any uh, good ideas, yeah. anyone who uh, want uh, yeah. to share something, a good initiative, a best practice. It's open. So please share with us. Thank you, Tony. It's great to start this Global Sports Week with so many uh, new ideas and projects. No, and, and for us, maybe just one last word, because it's also possible, reinvention in action is only possible when you have a collective and, and the strengths of Paris 2024, and it's also relying on the, the stakeholders we have. So we have the state, we, you, you just saw the, the minister, and, and that's really important that the state is uh, leading also the path of, of this project. We have uh, public authorities, we have uh, athletes, we have uh, the, the federations, we have uh, private sponsors, so the fans. And, and, and the, this energy coming from different stakeholders is very the key uh, factor of success for us uh, in terms of uh, leading the, the way to, to open the, the doors of the games. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much to uh, Tony for being with us. I mean, it's great to have you with us. And I know My you're pleasure. going to be here a lot over the next couple of days yes. as well. So don't worry, Tony's going to be around. <laughs> this is Global Sports Week 2021. And now let's go to get down to business, sorry, with our opening panel session, Global Sports Week 2021, reinvention in action. The opening panel is now dedicated to setting the scene uh, and putting things into perspective. Things that you're gonna be seeing in the next couple of days, we'll be exploring concrete solutions to reinvent in action, of course. And we're going to be covering our six different shifts, key macro topics around which sport play a major and impactful role. They are lifestyle, health, climate, equality, power, and data, of course. For our opening panel, let me invite to join us on stage NBA legend, entrepreneur, and ambassador of the 2021 Global Sports Week, Tony Parker. Tony, Hello. how are Hi. you? Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank Take you. Take a seat. Great. Um, so, 
you won't be alone, of course, on this panel. A lot of people. It's, yeah, there's a lot of people. <laughs> it's now time uh, to be joined by our French Minister of Sports, Roxana Marasignanou. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. And of course, we're following the tradition as we did last year. We have some young sports makers, of course, with us to discuss all our different debates. And today we're going to hear the voice of Gen Z with the young Marine Merceron. So, Marine, thanks so much for being with us as well. It's always a bit intimidating for the young sports makers, so we're going to make her feel as welcome as possible, of course. Great to have you with us. First of all, it's tradition here um, as well uh, that each of you takes maybe just 60 seconds, I know it's quite quick, um, to introduce your overall thoughts on this chapter, which is reinvention in action, of course, just to remind you. Um, priority to Gen Z of course, because we want to hear you first of all, Maureen. Um, you have 60 seconds, so the clock is ticking. Let's hear your ideas. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Maureen. I'm part of the Young Sports Makers of this year's edition, and uh, we represent uh, Generation Z, as you said. Uh, I'm 21 and from France, and I'm very happy to bring my generation's insight on uh, sports and reinvention in action, which is the topic of this session. Um, I think that my generation's expectations are different from yesterday's expectations. Um, therefore, brands, sport organizations, institutions, athletes, they all have to rethink the way they influence sports and they have to reinvent themselves in order to, uh, to keep up with the revolution that's led uh, by our way of consuming and practi practicing sports. Uh, so I look forward to uh, this week's uh, sessions to get ideas and, uh, and answers to all the questions we might have. Okay, thanks so much, Maureen. Perfect. You've set the scene there. Tony Parker, over to you. 60 seconds to give us your ideas on... I just, uh, I just have to introduce myself. Huh? Yeah, uh, well, we know who you are, but uh, your <laughs> overall thoughts on this My theme. overall thoughts on sports in general. Reinvention in yeah. action. Uh, when I saw the topic, I was like, that's a, that's a very long answer. <laughs> uh, but uh, to me, uh, it's hard to find a, a happy middle between uh, people that play professional sports and people that are doing sports for fun. I'm not going to bore you with uh, how sports is important, you know, for our health. Uh, but uh, if I wanted to start somewhere, I will start at the beginning. Uh, just uh, having sports at school, uh, especially in France, we have less and less uh, kids uh, basically just doing sports during the week. And uh, that's something now that I have kids, I will start at the, at the beginning and just uh, uh, educate people and explain them how important it is for our kids to just uh, play sports for their health, for their mind, for basically everything. Thank you very much, Tony. And Madame la Ministre, it's over to you. You have uh, 60 seconds as well to give us your thoughts. Um, my thoughts about your subject um, are inspired by my past and my career because yeah. uh, I'm a former swimmer. I swam at the Olympic Games and before that uh, uh, I, I have a career as a sport athlete but uh, at the beginning I came from another country and I came here in France at age of 10 being born in Romania. So for me uh, sport right now as a minister is um, a real challenge to make sport um, um, be more linked with its roots, the roots of integration of every people of our society, um, thanks to the sport, uh, because sport um, allows sharing values, common values, and um, find his own place in a society. And um, I will, uh, I have the same thought as uh, Tony when he speaks about the role of sport uh, in the education and. This uh, guides all my action at uh, the head of the Ministry of Sports now. Fantastic. So we're going to be able to... Minister of Sport with her lights <laughs> in 60 seconds, like we're in the Oscars or something. She can talk for two minutes. She's used to the pressure. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I think she's used to the pressure as well. 
<laughs> <laughs> We're going to have some time to go into detail, of course, on all of these different subjects, and education is, of course, one of them. Uh, we're going to dive deep now into our Global Sports Week uh, Frame program. Uh, we have identified six different shifts that are a major economic and societal pivotal areas. Um, and we're going to take five minutes to explore each shift, if you're all right with that, um, on the different topics. And we're going to start with the lifestyle shift. So get this, the pressure's on again. We have five minutes for this uh, shift. <laughs> but this is five minutes for you three. So, you know, we'll sort of work on the time there. I'm going to start with Maureen because we want to hear Gen Z's ideas, first of all. Um, how are Gen Z expecting to see a change in lifestyle, especially regarding the consumption of sport, Maureen? Well, I think that now um, we don't expect to just watch games. We want a bit more. Uh, we're getting used to uh, getting content uh, when we want, where we want, because of social media. Yeah. Uh, we're getting used to witnessing uh, athletes' daily routine, uh, to witnessing the atmosphere uh, of major championships. Uh, so I think that we, we want more. We want to feel that we're part of the team. and. Uh, I think that documentaries such as the final shot um, answer to that, to mm. those expectations. Okay, great. Um, Tony, I'm going to come to you. Um, you're French, American, uh, you know inside out the world of sport. Um, what's your, maybe your take on the, this new narrative, the way we're telling stories uh, uh, yeah. in sports? Yeah, just to, to go back to what she just said, yeah. uh, I think uh, our consumers, they, they, like, they want to know everything. Yeah. They want to basically <laughs> see details. everything, they want to <laughs> know all the details, open the locker rooms, and uh, mm. it's a very... Uh, sensitive subject, you know, because you want to open everything, but you have some stuff that's still like uh, private. Uh, but I think the, the new generation, because of social media, because of the way that now you can basically follow sports anywhere. A lot of people, they have their iPad, computer, uh, phone, and they're watching like three, four games yeah, <laughs> at the same time. Like yeah. that's the way they, they consume sports right now, that we have to try to give uh, more. And uh, that's what I try to do with my story, uh, when my uh, Netflix uh, movie, to try to open everything and hopefully inspire the, the new generation. Okay. Uh, Madame la Ministre, I'm coming to you now. So sport is, is lifestyle, actually. I think we can say it like that. And it's also um, an educational vector. Um, just how much is sport really fundamental in education and role modeling? Sport, for me, uh, transcends uh, borders and uh, transcend uh, races as well and uh, uh, it's uh, it's about emotion and uh, during all the ages uh, the sport has uh, society this emo emo emotional state of mind and uh, I think it's something that we have to preserve uh, because uh, when you speak to the heart uh, everything can go in your head more easily. Mm -hmm. So doing this link between uh, what you are experiencing on your body, on your emotional part, uh, it will help people to uh, understand better the things with their mind, with their head. And um, I think uh, also uh, in the educational part yeah. and at school, we have to do more link between what we are feeling, what we are experiencing on our bodies, uh, in order to be able to uh, understand better uh, what the teacher or what the adults are saying to us uh, because uh, we, we can feel the experience on our body. Like emotional kind of yes. intelligence? Is yes. That, is that correct? I think uh, this is uh, what um, the emo emotional intelligence, I think, uh, is the future. Okay. Tony, would you uh, like to comment? Uh, do you agree on that? Like this emotional yeah. and uh, physical I link? I agree with the, the minister. Um, emotions are, are very important. No, it's true. It's very important in, a, in the way you live sports uh, as an athlete. But even if you're not 
playing sports professionally, uh, I think it can have a huge impact uh, emotionally. I can see the difference on my kids when they, I know when they had sports or when they spend the whole day playing video games. <laughs> so it's a huge, huge difference. And so uh, I think it can have a, a very positive uh, impact. Okay, and do you feel that, Marine, when you're the, the emotional side of things as well is important for your generation? Yeah, um, I think that uh, practicing a physical activity is relieving. It's, uh, it's a way of feeling more emotions, practicing it or witnessing it. Uh, being a spectator is mm -hmm. also uh, giving a lot Emotion, of emotions. Of course. And uh, we're missing that right now. Uh, but uh, I hope we'll be, uh, find it that uh, those feelings again in a very few moments. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you very much. We're moving on to our next shift now. It's the shift of health. So health is obviously a major preoccupation for all of us at the moment as it's been at the heart of everything that we've been doing over the last uh, year. Um, we can't flourish and achieve things, Madame la Ministre. Um, we can't feel happy or feel uh, great about ourselves or have self-esteem if we're not in good health, that's for sure. Would you say that it was vital to stay active for, for mental health? Of course, uh, we are discovering it with uh, this period of uh, sanitary crisis that we are experiencing. Um, sport is never, was never so essential than now because uh, it uh, makes us uh, be linked to reality. Uh, we are uh, doing this Global Sports Week uh, in digital way. We are working uh, at a distance with um, computers and uh, we have never been so happy to go out and just to have a, a, a running or a football playing with our kids. And um, it's, it's becoming a kind of um, uh, richesse. Yeah, it's become a rare, something rare and it's become it's, rich yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah because, it's become important. Uh, because it's rare and um, also because uh, it uh, has been presented uh, as a danger zone because we don't are not able to wear a mask doing sport. So it's very important that uh, we all together reaffirm that uh, sport is essential for our health. It, I'm working on that with um, the other ministers of sports of uh, the European Union mm -hmm. in order to, to, to be able to do uh, like a manifest all together to say how essential sport is. And also that in that period of crisis, it's not uh, it's very important to, to deal with the crisis, but it's also important to have a longer view and to be aware of what is happening right now for our kids uh, that cannot practice, for ourselves that cannot practice, and at uh, uh, further ages, um, it will uh, have an impact. One year without mm. sport will, uh, of course, have an impact on the health of uh, a generation. And in some ways, out of every crisis comes opportunity. And of course, it's helped us in a way realize how essential it is to our daily lives. Yes, and that's why we have to put it uh, very early, at a very early age, in, the, um, uh, in each day of the pupils at school. Yeah. And uh, we have begun with uh, Jean-Michel Blanquer, the Minister of Education, a program for 30 minutes per day, each day doing some sport, half an hour, but each day doing that in every school, in plus uh, above uh, the three hours that they are doing sport normally at mm. school. But it's very important that we educate to uh, 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 gestes sportifs, at the uh, sport yes. sports uh, gestures. gestures. Yeah. You can always count on me for the bilingual <laughs> side. You. No worries there. If you have any problems, don't hesitate to ask Marine. Tony, I think, well, you're in the I States. Know, yeah, I know. So you've got no excuses. <laughs> um, from a professional sports personality, your point of view, how have the athletes actually dealt with this crisis? I mean, it must be... Oh, it's tough. Huh? It's tough. Complicated. Um, yeah. Like uh, all my friends, you know, I'm daily basis, you know, talking with them. And uh, it's, it's very hard to like to stay motivated. And uh, yeah. if you take that the Olympics as an example, 
to to be moved uh, one year is, is very hard to, to because you know athletes we we want to perform and we have goals and and now you feel like you have no goals you you, you don't know if uh, anything's going to happen if it's going to have a game if the competition is going to be canceled and so no, it's a it's a special year but at the same time uh, when you have low moments i think you can come back stronger from that and i really hope that everybody takes that uh, like a positive thing, uh, because we're realizing that sports, it is vital uh, for us and for our health. And, um, and hopefully we'll, we'll get out of that uh, even stronger. Are you sort of playing a role with the younger generations to motivate them, to keep them motivated? You were talking about education earlier. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's very important to you anyway. Uh, for sure. She, she talked about the, the program, you know, the 30-minute yeah. program. Uh, yeah. Love it. You know, I had uh, many conversations with the people in charge of that. I think that's huge, you know, for our schools and for our new generation. Uh, we can't get back the one year that we lost, but hopefully we can make it better for the future. Okay. Well, time's up. We're going to move on with uh, equality now. Oh, you're uh, so lucky. You're yeah, so yeah. Lucky. I'm, I'm, le I'm letting her off this one. <laughs> time's up. Uh, equality time. Here we go. <laughs> So, of course, I'm going to go straight to Marina for the equality question. We're going to start with you, Maureen. Um, as a young woman, how do you feel in your relationship to, to young men? Uh, have you observed uh, any movement on the equality status? Um, well, I'm lucky enough um, that I've never felt men were barrier to practicing physical activities. Uh, actually, I, I like playing against and with men uh, because I feel like I push myself a bit more when I play against them. Uh, I, I think the reason why is uh, that I have to prove myself more. I have to earn my spot on the field, in the team. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I want to, to show them I, I'm not going to be a burden in their team. So in that sense, I think there's progress to be made. Um, though we are moving forward, I feel... Uh, women's sport is giving more attention, uh, but still some progress to be made. Uh, and I hope that one day playing like a girl will be a positive uh, remark and not a negative one. Okay, so you don't feel like uh, y we've made so much progress on that front just right now? We've made some progress because we saw some um, promotion campaigns showing that playing like a girl can be uh, very strong, can be uh, impactful. Uh, there are some uh, some huge uh, women players in the world in different sports. So there's some progress being made, but uh, there's so more some to more do. more to come, of course. Yeah, long yeah, long way to go yet, of course. Tony agrees, he's, he's there. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Tony, I think you live in the States, is that correct? Excuse me? You live in the yes. States, yes, yeah, yes. is that correct? I'm more 50-50 right now. 50-50 yeah. right now, okay. <laughs> I've been so living in the US the last 20 years. Okay, so uh, the movement uh, Black Lives Matters mm -hmm. um, started obviously in America after mm -hmm. the death of uh, George Floyd. Mm -hmm. um, people have actually, I feel anyway, that was my observation, taken the chance to reflect on their own privilege and racial ignorance. Um, have you started to uh, observe maybe any real benefits uh, in the world of sports from uh, this movement? Yeah, I think uh, we still have a long way to go. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the, the NBA uh, was big in that movement and uh, uh, having uh, their voice uh, to be uh, heard. And um, I, I think uh, we're making progress, but uh, I still think we have a long way to go. Just like women's sports, you know, that's always a very sensitive uh, subjects. And I think it will take time uh, before we see uh, some real uh, results. But at least uh, we're talking about it and uh, people are not afraid anymore to, to say what they want and to say what they believe in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and hopefully, you know, in, uh, in the next couple of years, we can see uh, some real change. Do you feel like people have become more outspoken in the press, exactly, in yeah. the media? Yeah, because before, you know, politics or all that kind of stuff, we never really um, said anything as athletes, you know. It was, yeah. it was always like a subject you wanted to avoid. And I feel like the new generation, and if you take the, right now the best player in the NBA, LeBron James, he's very outspoken and, uh, and we're all fighting for what we believe. Uh, that's something, you know, fair and, and uh, like you said, equality. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I just wanted to add the women's yeah? sport too, because huh, I wanted to add. Yeah, we still have it. a long way to go. Huh? Like uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big, uh, like I fight for women rights and uh, women's sport. I'm the owner of a, of a women basketball team, but I can still see a big difference. You know, when I go see sponsors or all that kind of stuff, it's, it's a big difference between men and women. And I hope one day uh, they can be the same because uh, me personally, I love uh, women's sports. I think it's, uh, they have great qualities and I think uh, we should uh, uh, treat them the same as uh, we do men. Okay. Uh, Madame la Ministre, um, I think we can safely say that the sports ministry is one of the main accelerators to fill the gaps of equality. Um, what are you doing to achieve this? It's true that uh, this is my principal objective, being Minister of Sports, is to work on gender equality. Um, at first at the, the head of the institutions, at the, at the French Federation of Sports, and uh, we want to inscribe it in the law to oblige uh, French association to have equality in the, um, uh, in the executive board at the head of the federation, but also in every territory. Um, women must be encouraged to act as leaders in the field of sport and to, to have this uh, self-esteem of themselves, uh, because uh, I'm sure that uh, more practice for women, more recognition for uh, sp uh, for women's sport, for sport uh, in a feminine way, can also be driven by uh, more women at the head of federation, uh, and also uh, thinking about a special offer, because um, most of the time um, the the offer are are is aiming uh, a masculine or uh, gender and, yeah. and uh, the offer is not turned on uh, and uh, to the, the women. The women. Yes, and this is uh, just half of the humanity that we missed yeah. doing that. So. so we need to change yes. the aim and move over uh, to the women's side as well. Well, equality is the idea. I'm convinced of that. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you very much to all three of you. We're up of, out of time for the equality sector. Moving on now to the power shift. So we're talking about power, and I'm coming to you, Marine. First of all, who has the power in the world of sports? In in a world where all eyes are on Gen Z at the moment, that's for sure. It's you guys that are uh, forging the future of sports. Um, how much influence do you feel that you have as a generation? Um, well, I think we have power in the sense that uh, we are customers, first of all, and uh, we represent... Uh, nice market share for brands and uh, sport organizations. Uh, I've always been taught that the customer is the one in power, so mm. this would give us some power and um, allow us to have influence and impact on a uh, sport organization strategy, uh, on uh, making them a bit more sustainable, more inclusive, more innovative, and I think we see that uh, in sport organizations and organizations more, more globally today and uh, we'll have some impact and influence too as employees. We are getting to the age of uh, joining companies and uh, adding our ideas and uh, view to their strategy. So this will uh, be part of our responsibility uh, to implement or try to implement our ideas in, uh, in the company we'll be working for. And do you feel like your generation is, uh, is uh, militant, is, uh, has the energy? I would say that yes, um, I feel like we managed to make ourselves heard. Yeah. Uh, I think social media is a, is a great way to have a voice. Uh, it's, uh, it gives us power uh, because uh, it, uh, it influences companies, in it influences the, the public opinion. Uh, so, yeah, I think we, we have a voice and we have the power to impact uh, on the company strategy. Fantastic. Uh, Tony, over the, the years you've been a champion, a legend, now an entrepreneur, um, how has your role actually evolved? Do you feel that you have more influence today? 
I don't know if I have more uh, influence today, but I know and I realized that we have an unbelievable platform to inspire people. And so I always took it very seriously to be a great ambassador for France and, and the US. And, um, and for me, you just have to lead by example uh, and control what you can control and, uh, and inspire people. And uh, that's what I decided to do during my career uh, as, a, as a basketball player. And now as a businessman, I try to build something that can sustain uh, over time and help uh, the new generation. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to have clear ideas, have a direction and be a role model for those that are watching you. Yeah, yeah I think you have to take that responsibility. It comes with the, the success. If you become a, a, a champion, you have to accept that role. And you have to realize that a lot of kids are watching you. A lot of kids are wearing your jersey. And so me personally, I took it seriously, uh, that role of ambassador uh, for basketball as an athlete, uh, a French athlete in the US and around the world to represent my country well and uh, to be a good role model for the kids who's going to say maybe one day they want to be like me. Okay. Madame la Ministre, uh, France is obviously rearing up to host some really great sporting events. I'm thinking about the Rugby World Cup at the Olympic Games in 2024, of course. Um, what kind of influence does these, do these sporting events actually bring to a hosting country on the world sporting map? What I'm feeling as a minister for two years now is that um, all these big events uh, bring uh, some positive energy and they, they also can help um, the subject that many countries faced also, are facing also, that uh, sport in their own country has to, to have another place uh, that, they used to, that it used to have. So these um, events are helping this uh, change of place uh, and put the sport in the middle of the discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, sport can be a solution for every politic of health, of integration, of um, um, to find a job for uh, fragile people. And it's very important that these events are taking into account all this dimension also, not only organize the competition, but also the role they ha can have in the society uh, for the other um, politics uh, from the society and of course we need the athletes uh, that they take uh, um, place in all these uh, fights because sometimes it's uh, f also fighting to, to, to reach and to gain this place uh, in a country. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is also a wonderful window to, to speak about our country, to um, speak also about the know-how of our industries, of our companies, when we are organizing such events. And I will finish by uh, the most important. Uh, it's also a, a motivating source for our national athletes to be able to compete in front of their family, in front yeah. of the uh, national pu public um, it's you know I'm coming from a sport with uh, we don't have any swimming pools before the Olympics in 2024 to be able to organize um, uh, European or world championships and during all my career it was very pity and it was very sad <laughs> not to be able to to win in front of my family here yeah so I'm very happy that it's can change right now. Uh, it must have been quite frustrating, so it's a great achievement for sure. Moving on now, it's time for climate. And I'm coming to Maureen, first of all, I believe that Gen Z are a little bit fed up of shouting out about climate change. That's how I feel and that's what I've heard when I've been talking to a lot of young sports makers. Um, do you feel that you're being heard? I think that change is starting to, to go slowly, but surely. Um, we have a voice. Uh, I said before that with social media, it is easier to 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 make ourselves heard. heard. Yes. Uh, we also um, are quite noisy when uh, we go on the streets to um, <laughs> to demonstrate or to uh, 
to tell what we want, what we don't want. Uh, climate change is uh, sure one of the most important uh, preoccupations we have uh, for the, ne the next decades. Um, so, yeah, I think we, we're making ourselves heard. Now we have to make sure that our voice is not ignored and that um, the, the highest sphere uh, of power take, uh, take our voices into account. But I'm, I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, we are aware that change is not easy to implement, uh, especially nationwide or worldwide. So uh, we'll keep on fighting uh, until uh, we there's some great progress uh, made. Okay, so you feel like the, the, the government and the uh, high authorities are listening to you? I think so. Uh, it would be hard not to listen to us because we, we're quite noisy. <laughs> um, I think that the fact that Greta Thunberg uh, is given so much attention, uh, she's a, a young person just like us, uh, is the proof that uh, we are listened to. Uh, but we will keep on uh, making noise and uh, slow changes are a great start and we'll try and make it a bit faster. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the government are listening to the young generations? Anyway, uh, in our government and uh, with Emmanuel Macron, we, we uh, would uh, do everything to hear more the voice uh, of the new generation, of your generation right now. In sport is easier because we have made the choice to listen more to the athletes, to put them more in light and to put them more in the uh, decisive, uh, decisional bodies yes. of the federations. And uh, when you are speaking about athletes, you uh, speak about youth in general. So it's also a way to uh, listen to their other preoccupation yeah. uh, far more over about sport. Okay. Not only about sport, but far more over. So the sports minister is listening to you, you get it? <laughs> Tony, I'm coming over to you. You're an influential uh, sports personality. You also are an entrepreneur. I believe you have a ski station, is that correct? Yes. Um, how important is climate change for you? As an oh, entrepreneur. It's, it's very important. I was just watching last night the documentary uh, Plastic Ocean, you know, yeah. so that was a huge one. I uh, advise everybody to go watch it. Yeah. Uh, definitely made me think uh, differently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, just to be educated. I think uh, for me and, and my generation, uh, uh, obviously you see the young generation with their big voice. I can confirm that the government, you know, they, they're making efforts, you know, to include, you know, the athletes and listening to the young generation. Uh, but I think it's all about being educated and make sure uh, that the people know the effects on any kind of action you, you're going to do. And so uh, watching those uh, documentaries are very helpful. Yeah. As far as an entrepreneur and being sort of having this ski station and, and, and other, other things, working with different um, basketball teams and all the rest of it, you, are you implementing things or thinking about implementing yes. things? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, the new technology is going fast, you know, yeah. and, uh, and everything is going fast in, in our world. So we just have to make sure that uh, we stand on top of it, uh, but make sure we're not um, affecting, you know, the, the world or, or, like you said, the climate or anything that can uh, affect uh, how we're going to live in our future and uh, in the future of our, of our kids. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to move on to our next chapter because I think it's a, a one that's going to inspire you uh, quite a lot. It's called Data. Let's take a look. <laughs> And Tony, I'm going to start with you. Um, today we have so much data at our fingertips, of course. Um, we're talking about technology a, a couple of seconds ago. Um, data helps us to measure performance, affluence, climate. I mean, we can do so much today with, uh, with data. How is data actually transforming the world of sport? I mean, things have changed a lot over the yeah, last sure. 10 years. Going super fast. And uh, as a team owner, it's very tricky uh, data because it's a lot of information. And sometimes it's too much. Because yeah. <laughs> sometimes I like a little bit old school. I'm like, no, no, just go on the court and let's just play. Yeah. <laughs> like data can, to a certain extent, help a lot, you know, knowing uh, like what an athlete can do and not do. 
but uh, it's still sports, and that's the beauty of sports. Anything can happen. And so, yes, data can be very helpful, but uh, to a certain extent. Yeah. So do you actually, have you decided to adopt the usage yeah, some of data? Of it, some, some of it. it. Yeah, yeah. Some of it uh, we do uh, because we want to stay on top of the game and we want to, uh, we want to be one of the best uh, teams, you know, uh, in that area. Uh, but I'm trying to find a, like a happy middle of what we're going to take and what we're going to not take. Okay, so it's so it's just a, everybody's got their own philosophy on that, you know, sure. on data. Sure. What about you, um, Madame la Ministre? You were an ex-athlete as well. I mean, uh, you, we didn't have access, I guess, to so much data. Uh, there's a lot more uh, today. I mean, would you adopt the the the, the different data? I agree with Tony on saying that is uh, really like a personal choice and a personal yeah. feeling and a lot of trainers are not uh, yet ready to go into that. Uh, but uh, at, with the National Sport Agency in France, we have begun uh, to um, uh, go after our delay, uh, retard, c'est ça? Yeah. Oh. Delay. Yeah, well, well, well uh, yes, you're late, so you Yeah, we were very up. late. We wanted to catch up um, uh, what other countries are doing, and we invest a lot in a data lab mm -hmm. in order to, to put at, dis uh, uh, at disposal for yeah. the trainers who would like to, to, to take it into account, mm -hmm. data about the athletes, about the progression of uh, the concurrence, and uh, uh, in sport, everything is about uh, data, numbers, statistics, uh, yeah. everything, uh, records. But also, uh, sports movement is um, um, a little bit afraid because they want to preserve, and they have they are right to want uh, to preserve the the human touch, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and also to say that uh, okay, data is everywhere, but uh, it's not uh, everything, and we have something more to bring, even to data. But they are important. So data has to be at the service of humans and not the other way around. Yes, and uh, you have always to let the choice to a trainer and to an athlete to use it or not to use it because uh, it cannot be the truth all the, uh, during all the career. Sometimes you will, be, uh, you will need it and sometimes you will uh, be more inspired to, to make confidence on what you feel and what you are seeing with your, with your own eyes. Okay. Maureen, I'm coming to you. Um, are you not afraid that my technology might take the, the younger generations to a parallel, parallel world of, of virtual sports, sort of far from the physical one? Um, actually, it's one of my biggest fears for sports. Um, I love sport because it brings a, it teaches a lot of values, uh, respect, inclusion, um, sharing. Uh, it's also a university of life. Uh, you win to lo you learn to lose. Uh, you learn to win. Uh, you learn to start all over again. Um, I think that losing that side of sports and uh, going more and more digital, uh, especially with esports, uh, is um, is killing a little bit uh, these uh, uh, these values and uh, what uh, sport teaches teaches uh, young people. Um, I'm not sure esports is uh, the, um, the best place for everybody to be. It's still quite a, a toxic environment for, for some people. So in that sense, I'm quite afraid that uh, younger generations won't get uh, as much from sports, uh, from esports, as uh, I have I've had the chance to to get from sports. Um, but I think that sport has a lot to learn from esports in terms of attractiveness. So wow. the solution might be to mix digital and sports to attract more young people and uh, solve the sedentary lifestyle issues we are, we are witnessing now. Of course. Well, thanks very much to uh, all three of you for this very rich exchange. These are the shifts that we're going to be going into detail about over the next few days with some uh, incredible speakers. I think we're just going to take 60 seconds again uh, for each of you to maybe um, share your thoughts about this exchange and what you're hoping to get out of the uh, Global Sports Week over the next uh, uh, couple of days. Um, let's start with uh, Madame la Ministre. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's over to you to just sort of conclude and give us uh, your ideas on what uh, you feel that you want to get out of the Global Sports Week. I think you choose uh, the best uh, subjects uh, to, um, that we can exchange about them right now. They are very uh, 
uh, we are thinking at that every time um, how sport can deal with um, how sport can be a better green sport and also how it can uh, change uh, the view on the society and uh, I wish that the exchanges uh, can be very rich and you will uh, highly participate at these uh, uh, exchanges of point of view. Okay, great, thank you. We're going to move on to Tony. I was just happy to hang out with Madame la Ministre and uh, with you. <laughs> I'm having a good time in the Eiffel Tower. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> well, great. That's he was my, happy. That's my conclusion. That's his conclusion. And Marine? <laughs> uh, so I was very happy to share the stage with, uh, with you, uh, with the French Minister of Sport and Tony Parker. And I have a few insights from the other young sports makers. Yeah, great. That share I them. received on that beautiful her digital tool. Very oh. loud uh, here. here we go. Very You're going to hear her loud and clear. That's why I kept it short for, for, <laughs> for Marine. <laughs> okay, go for it. So Marine. they all say that uh, they want to see more uh, 360 degrees uh, documentaries like uh, like yours. They want to know a lot and they want to, lo to know all about sports. Um, they also um, think about mixing more disciplines. Uh, we saw a lot of new sports uh, created these last few years. Uh, maybe some uh, more new sports will come in the, the, the next years. And um, they think that uh, legends and, uh, and uh, great actors, uh, sport players, athletes, have a great role uh, to play in, uh, in climate change, like you do. Uh, so they, I think they, they, they count on uh, athletes and uh, sport players to, to play a role in that field. Well, great. Thank you for all That's of these great, insights, yeah. Marine, and thank you to all the young sports makers that have participated and sent through, because you're connected there, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, she's, she's watching, she's listening, she's, she's everywhere. Perfect. Well, thank you very much to the three of you. This was a great um, start, uh, of course, to our Global Sports Week. Uh, we have a special guest that's coming to join the panel now. I'm really, really mm. excited, actually, to have him with us. Um, he has just uh, been around the world, an incredible tour of the world on the Vendée Globe, he is the famous single-handed, non-stop, round-the-world uh, yacht race, and he won this race. His name is Yannick Besteven. Let's have him with us. Hey, Yannick, bonjour. Je vais switcher en français un tout petit peu. I'm going to switch in French a little bit, and I'll translate as I can. You're going to help me if I get stuck. Uh, perfect. So, Yannick, uh, c'est un vrai plaisir de, de vous avoir avec nous sur le plateau. It's a real pleasure to have you with us on the set today. Um, Comment ça va après 80 jours, 4 heures et 44 minutes bah, Ça va bien, pleine forme. La transition est un peu raide entre 80 jours en solitaire et se retrouver <laughs> aujourd'hui sous les feux des médias. So the transition is a little bit difficult after 80 days on his own and now he's with us with the media. Yeah. Mais c'est un bonheur de pouvoir vivre ça. Je suis encore sur un petit nuage et j'ai du mal à me rendre compte de, de l'exploit. Yeah, it's a bit difficult for him to sort of realize what has actually happened, of course. We're looking at some of the amazing images here um, of you uh, just after the, the race and, and winning here, of course. Um, so maybe for those that are not familiar with the Vendée Globe, because we've got a lot of people watching us from around the world, um, this was a unique and epic um, event, of course. Um, in addition to this, there was an incredible uh, rescue story concerning your colleague, Kevin Escoffier. His boat was wrecked and you, alongside other colleagues attempted to rescue him and it was finally uh, Jean Le Cam who rescued Kevin but you were all awarded bonus time and uh, that was for this rescue operation of course and at the end your bonus was decisive in your victory. What's the meaning of solidarity and mutual support in your sport and more widely in, in life? Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire la solidarité et le support mutuel que vous vous donnez dans, dans votre sport? C'est très, très important parce qu'on est dans, dans un sport aventure. On sait qu'on prend des risques lorsqu'on part en solitaire autour du monde sur des, des machines comme nos bateaux. Et euh, il est hors de question euh, pendant notre course de laisser euh, un, un collègue, un ami sur le, sur le bord du chemin. Et lorsque Kevin a eu son accident, euh, on ne pense plus à la course. Quoi. On pense à, à ramener notre copain et, et ça a été une nuit en enfer pour le retrouver dans son radeau de survie. Euh, Euh, au milieu de vagues de 6 mètres, euh, loin de tout. Quoi. Donc euh, il était hors de question pour moi de continuer la course si on ne le repêchait pas. Quoi. 
So when in that kind of situation you're racing, when somebody is in a very difficult situation, of course, the only thing that you can think about at that time is to get your friend out of that difficult situation, and, that, and that's all that counts, of course. Um, how does this sportsmanship and this solidarity inspire you, Tony? Uh, that was very inspiring. And uh, what he did, uh, I will do the same thing. And uh, uh, to do a race like that, you saw like into your race, but to stop the race and, uh, and go get your teammate, uh, that was very inspiring. Yeah, fantastic. I know you had the, the possibility of um, congratulating Yannick when he... Two times already. Twice already, <laughs> yeah? Yes, <sir>. <laughs> I know you've already had the, the opportunity, but I guess he's here and he's sitting opposite you. So what would you like to say to him now that you guys are face-to-face? Are, are -face? I've met uh, Jean Le Cam this uh, morning ah. at an uh, émission. Uh, J'ai rencontré Jean Le Cam ce matin à une émission mm -hmm. et on a pu vraiment, du coup, échanger avec ce que vous m'aviez dit et, et ce que lui uh, m'a dit aussi de la course. Donc c'était très intéressant. Et avec Yannick et le ministre de l'Éducation nationale, nous avons réfléchi ensemble à comment utiliser sa, sa, son aventure fantastique pour pouvoir la raconter aux enfants. Aujourd'hui, il y a 70 000 enfants dans toutes les écoles de France qui ont suivi l'aventure du Vendée Globe, celle de Yannick, mais aussi de tous les concurrents, et faire du sport et de ces aventures humaines des véritables outils d'éducation aussi pédagogique pour les enfants, pour leur faire parler aussi euh, voilà, de géographie, d'aventure, de sport, d'humanité. Euh, C'est ça aussi qu'on veut, qu veut transmettre grâce à la tenue de tels événements. Madame la ministre, elle est en train de réfléchir. Um, I'm speaking in French. I don't know which oh, language yes. I'm speaking. Yeah. Um, uh, you we, can we, translate. Yeah, I'm translating. For I'm translating for me course, too. Of course. <laughs> no, uh, Madame la ministre is thinking about how to explain and uh, and uh, pass this story on to all the children uh, around France. I think there were 70,000 70, children yes. uh, watching, obviously, this adventure, and uh, they're actually thinking of a way to, to to spread the good news and to get the children excited about this uh, this amazing adventure. How important was this event, Yannick, for the grand public? C'était très important, je pense, pour le grand public, surtout de vous suivre en ce moment où on est, on va dire, confiné, on est dans une situation où c'est très, très compliqué, et de vivre cette aventure avec vous, ça a touché beaucoup de monde, je pense. C'était très important, et d'ailleurs, j'ai eu l'occasion de remercier les autorités publiques d'avoir autorisé l'événement, le, le départ du Vendée Globe, puisque le 8 novembre, on était déjà en crise sanitaire. Et euh, pour notre économie du sport, nos sponsors, bien sûr que c'était important, mais pour tout le grand public qui est arrivé, on a amené tout, tout, toute la France et le monde entier avec nous sur nos bateaux. Euh, on a partagé notre aventure et ça a été une bulle d'air, alors qu'aujourd'hui, tout le monde est enfermé. On a permis, nous, de, de, de s'évader et, et de faire rêver les gens. Et c'est en ça que la course au large a apporté beaucoup d'espoir à, à, à plein de foyers. Ouais. I think this uh, race brought a lot of um, hope to a lot of people watching, and uh, Yannick would like to thank all the authorities for allowing this race to take place, because uh, when they started out, we were obviously in a serious uh, uh, condition. Uh, you know, the crisis was in full flow. Um, so uh, yeah, I think it was majorly important for everybody uh, watching. Do you feel the same? Did you yes, have a lot of, of comments from people? Of course, uh, it's very important and uh, to come to the beginning when I told uh, about the emotion uh, that uh, uh, these big events can bring to population in this tough period, I think it's very important to, to keep the, the emotional level at a certain uh, uh, point and I think that uh, sporting events can also help to that and in that period it's very important to Uh, to come with that in, uh, in the house of every uh, French people and of, on, of every uh, people, I, I mean in the world, and sport uh, is a magic. Uh, what, uh, found. It brings a lot voilà. of magic, yeah, yes. of course, I, I completely understand it does, it brings a lot of magic to those that are watching and a lot of hope at the moment, I think, yes. to uh, those that are watching. Yannick, uh, what are your plans for the future? I guess you want to get some rest, c'est quoi vous? Vos plans pour l'avenir, c'est se reposer, j'imagine, Oui, c'est se reposer. Après, nous, les marins, on est particuliers parce qu'on est des insatisfaits permanents. Lorsque nous sommes en mer, on rêve d'arriver à terre. Et lorsque nous arrivons à terre, on rêve de repartir en mer. Donc, vous ne savez pas ce que vous ça voulez. Ça fait trois fait. jours que je suis arrivé, c'est ça. Et je pense déjà au large. Donc, euh, oui, il me tarde de renaviguer, de repartir en course. Mm, OK. Déjà. Déjà. <rire>
up. You know, stay away. <laughs> he's, he's never satisfied. The, 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 the people uh, who, go, who go sailing, they obviously want to be sailing when they're at home, and when they're at home, they want to be sort of the, uh, the other way around. Anyway, uh, Yannick is going to take a little bit of time to, to rest a little bit. No, a little bit, yes, and then move on uh, to the following uh, side of things. Do you, do you, are you inspired by his... Uh, yeah, of course. It was very uh, inspiring, and I felt race. like... Uh, People follow the Vendée Globe more than usual because of what's happening yeah. in, the, in the world. And it was uh, very interesting to, to watch. Even in the US, they talked to me about the, the race. And I was like, oh, you know the Vendée Globe? <laughs> it's like I had no <laughs> idea they follow in the US. So it was, it was pretty fun. And I'm a big fan of, of boats. So um, I go on, on boat vacation all the time. And I just love the feeling of you know going mm. far in the middle of, of nowhere. So not to the his level, <laughs> but, uh, but I love the, the sensation. And I was very happy for that community and that sport that they had that exposition uh, because it's pretty fun to watch. Did you watch Marine the Vendée Globe? Yes, uh, I tried to follow a little bit uh, every day's uh, actions and there were many so it was very uh, <laughs> very interesting to, to see and as you said uh, it was one of the only events uh, taking place exactly. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, it uh, drew a lot of attention. And extremely inspiring for everybody yeah. watching, of course. Yannick, thanks for taking the time to come and see us. Merci beaucoup d'être venu nous voir. Ça nous fait vraiment plaisir. Uh, thank you to all of you for your participation in this um, session, of course. Um, and this is Global Sports Week 2021. Are you ready to change now? Wow, a lot of emotion there. We're now moving on to a 